Today's lesson is topic 3.6 using fractions in word problems. We're going to look at some application problems and strategies in order to solve them. Because the lessons that we're looking at in today's word problems don't involve operations, we're going to be reducing the steps, although all of these eight steps are really good ones to know for problem solving. But today we're definitely going to be reading the question carefully, and then we're going to be deciding what numbers are important to the question. We may have to do a little bit of subtraction in order to, to express our fractions correctly. And then when we have our answer, and we've calculated it and placed it, we can check and make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. And if necessary, we can write a statement with the answer. The first example is about a math course. There's nine units of equal length in a math course. And Tom has finished two of the units. What fraction of the course has he finished? And what fraction of the course is still unfinished? So we don't have to do any adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing of fractions yet. What we have to do is express the fractions correctly based on what they're asking. So when we look at the course, the course has a total of nine units and Tom has finished two of them. So he has finished two out of the nine units. To determine the number that is unfinished means that we have to take the total and take away what he has already completed, giving us what remains. And that's seven. Seven units he hasn't completed yet. So we're going to express as as a fraction. Seven over nine means that we have seven out of the nine units unfinished. For number two, there's 20 weeks in a regular Northwest College term. Jean has been at Northwest College for three weeks. What fraction of a term does she have yet to complete? So for this word problem, they're only asking us one question. So what we see is we have a total of 20 weeks, and she's been here for three weeks. So what does she have yet to complete? Meaning what has she not done? So we take the total 20, take away what she has done, and that leaves us with what is yet to be done. So that's our first step. And then we can place that number 17 over 20. So 17 out of 20 weeks, uh, she has yet to complete. So remember, our strategy for these problems is to read carefully and only answer what they're asking of us. Later on, when we're getting comfortable with using operations with fractions, these kind of word problems can actually mix people up because they're expecting to do more. But these are really reading questions and showing what fractions actually mean. So number one, Joel plowed 32 rows for a garden. He planted 13 rows of corn. What fraction of the garden has he planted in corn? What fraction of the garden has he planted in other crops? Well, we know that his garden is a maximum of 32 rows. And we know that in corn, he's planted 13 of them. So 13 out of the 32 rows are corn. To determine the other crops, we're going to take the total 32 rows, subtract away the 13, and that will give us our answer. And we can do that vertically, 32 minus 13. We'll need to borrow, and then we'll be getting 19 rows. So 19 of the 32 rows are for other crops. For number two, Lynn attends kindergarten five days a week. She missed one day this week. What fraction of the school week did she miss? What fraction of the week did she attend school? So here we know the week is a total of five days. She missed one day, so one-fifth was missed. And then what was there is, of course, the five days take away the one day that she missed. 
So four out of the five days she attended. Exercise 3.6, question number seven. A new house has a kitchen, a living room, three bedrooms and two bathrooms. So I'm going to assign numbers. So one kitchen, one living room, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. A, what fraction of the total number of rooms are bathrooms? Okay, well, first up, we have to add all of our rooms together. So one plus one is two, plus three is five, plus two is seven. So we have seven total rooms. So that's going to be our denominator for question A. So the total number of rooms are seven and we have two bathrooms. So two out of the seven are bathrooms. When we look at B, what part of all the rooms does the kitchen represent? Well, the kitchen is only one room and out of all the rooms, there are seven. So one seventh is the kitchen. And then C, what part of the rooms are bedrooms? We see that we still have the seven rooms and this time the bedrooms are three. So three sevenths are bedrooms. Question number nine, a math class is made up of five students between ages 19 and 27. 12 students between 28 and 35 years of age, and two students between 36 and 40 years of age. Eight of the students are female. So there's a lot of information in that problem. So let's read what they want, and then we can pick out what we need. So A, what part of the class is female? Well, we know eight of the students are female. So the eight is going to go in our numerator but what we don't know is the total number of students. So let's go back. Five students are the youngest, 12 are in the middle age range, and two are in the older age range. So we're going to take those number of students, we're not going to worry about the ages, and we're going to add them to get the total number in the class. So five plus 12 plus two, 5 plus 12 is 17, and 2 more gives us a total of 19 students. So 8 of the 19 are female. For B, what part of the class is between 19 and 35 years of age? Well, 5 of them are in that 19 to 27 year category and 12 of them are up to age 35. So we're going to take five plus 12 for part B, and that makes 17. So 17 out of the 19 are between 19 and 35 years of age. And then C, what fraction of the class do the male students represent? Well, we know from part A that eight of the students are female, and we know the total is 19. So let's take away the female students so that we can get to the male students. And we see that 19 minus eight is 11. So the male students represent 11 out of the 19 in that class.